Hey everybody, uh, this lesson is nets and surface areas. So we're going to be um, uh, drawing three-dimensional figures in a two-dimensional space. So so our, to our groovy teachers, um, the beginning of this lesson requires students to have, have large graph paper and scissors. If you don't have the uh, large graph paper, um, I, I forgot that part right there. Uh, anyways, if you don't have the very large graph paper, uh, small graph paper is okay, but uh, uh, they will just have to use you know like four squares for one okay so so anyway so here's our, our common core strand for our awesome teachers and then our question here is how can we use nets to find what's called surface area remember anything that has this word right here area we end it with square units so meters squared centimeters squared inches squared feet squared so on okay anything with area this says surface area so square units on that stuff okay so a net is a two-dimensional uh, pattern of shapes that can be folded into a three-dimensional figure. The shapes in the, the net become the sides or the faces of our three-dimensional figure. Okay, so here we go. Do you guys know what a cube is? A cube is like a, a die. You know, when you roll a dice, uh, dice is plural for die. When you roll a dice, a die, a die is a cube. Okay, so let's copy uh, each of these net figures on large graph paper. Okay, so so to probably pause it right here. So if you can just click on anywhere in this video right here, it should pause for you if you have a, a touch uh, um, activate thing with your computer. Otherwise, just do it on your computer and then have the students copy these figures down on graph paper right here. Okay, and then when you do that, then please cut them out. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to fold along these black lines, okay? So, um, uh, and so you're going to cut out the blue lines right here, and then we're going to fold in the black lines right here, okay? So copy each net figure on large graph paper and then cut them out along the blue lines right there. And then one of these net figures will fold into a cube. The other one won't. Which one will fold into a cube? Which one uh, will not make a cube? Sorry, that's what this one says. Okay, so um, so again, pause it if you can. You know, click on the figure or click on your computer and into this window right here. It should pause, no problem. And then uh, and then see which uh, let, let the kids fold them in and see which one makes a cube. Okay. All right. So you found out probably that this one made a cube if you folded this piece up I can't do that in this um, in this two-dimensional screen that I have right here so if you folded this one up and then folded this one over and then over and then over and then folded this one up this one would make a cube this one would fold up and then over 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 this one would fold up there would be a hole on the other side it wouldn't make a cube we want to make sure that there's no holes on that okay so no open sides, that's what this says, with no open sides. So which one would not make a cube with no open sides? It would be it would be this guy right here, okay? All right, so uh, there are several other figures that will make up a cube, and uh, just make sure that you're doing six squares, you guys, and then cutting them out and then folding them, and make sure your net is, I think there's 19 different ways you can do this, you guys. So see if you can come up with a couple, you guys. And right here, if, I, if you were in my class, I would pause and have my students work on that. And I, I bet it would take them a, ooh, an additional 10, 15 minutes, I'm guessing. I don't know. Um, uh, that's what I would allow. Maybe not. Uh, just you use your judgment on that, and then um, and then compare yours with others in the class. Okay, so I think there's about 19 of them that can do that. Here's a cube right here that's being folded up. Can you can you draw this guy out into a net figure? Can you fold all the sides down? Fold this side down, this side down, that side down, and these guys down, and what would that look like? Okay, so that would give you a net figure. So how can we tell that? Each net can't be folded into a cube with no open sides without actually cutting and folding, okay? Well, this one here, there's only five squares. So this one, you need six squares because a cube has six sides. So this one won't work because there's only five of them right here. This one has six, but if you roll this up, it'd roll up into a, um, a square, but there'd be both open ends right there. So that one only has five sides. A cube has six faces, and so... Uh, that net would fold up into a loop of squares with no top or bottom or, or front or back or something, okay? All right, suppose you cut up a cereal box along its edges, okay? If you lay it out flat, 
what shape will you see and how will these shapes uh, how many shapes will there be okay so imagine a cereal box you guys I don't have a picture of one I should have grabbed one and put it on here and then we cut it down the edges right there and then we just kind of folded it all out on the ground right there it would look something like this they would have six rectangles they'd all be rectangles and they'd fold out something like that okay all right so surface area of a pyramid you guys a pyramid um, uh, is uh, you remember like in Egypt those pyramids they go up into a point right there so that's what a pyramid is so the surface area of a three-dimensional figure is the sum of the areas of all its bases. All right, you're going to hear some banging. We're having construction work on our house right now, and it's summertime, and so that's what that extra noise is in the background. Sorry about that. So a net can be uh, helpful when finding surface areas. Okay, so so a pyramid is a three-dimensional figure whose base is a polygon, and other faces are triangles. Okay, think of a pyramid in Egypt. Can you see the triangle faces that go up into that point right there? Okay, so a pyramid is identified by the shape of its bases right there. So here's an example of a pyramid. Again, sorry, I've got uh, uh, some there doing some hammering on the side of our house. We're getting new siding put up, so bang, bang, bang. Anyway, uh, make a net of this uh, square pyramid. And so what we're going to do is um, uh, if I had scissors right here, imagine if I cut down this edge right here, cut down that edge, and see the one in the back? Okay, cut down that one, cut down that one. And if we fold it all out, let's slide that up right there. Okay, so it would look something like that, okay? And so, and so now we're going to find the surface area. Well, the surface area is going to be the area of all these triangles and the square on the bottom, okay? Because it says it's a square pyramid. That means the base is a square right there. Well, let's find the area of this triangle right here, okay? So the area of that triangle is going to be 1 half base times height. So 1 half uh, 16 times 17 and uh, equals 136. Okay, now since there's four of them, we're going to multiply that by four to get all four of those guys right there, okay? So when we do that, we get 544 square inches right there. Now, the whole square... Um, uh, surface area is going to be, you got to add that base in there. Well, that base is a square, so 16 times 16 is 256. So the total surface area is going to be the area of the faces plus the base. So 544 plus 256, 800 square inches right there. Okay. All right, let's do that with this guy. Same figure, same figure. The only difference was, was this right here. This was 17. So um, this is now going to be 20 right here, okay? So that's 20, but the base is still 16, okay? Same figure except except for the 20 and the 17. So we'll find the area of that uh, one of those triangles, and then all four of them, we multiply it by 4, and then we add that base. It's still the same base, so we get 856 on that one square inches, okay? Square inches. I think the last one was in square feet, something like that. Okay, so a prism is a three-dimensional figure with two identical parallel bases that are polygons. And you're thinking, what? What does that mean? So I'll show you that. We've seen prisms all throughout. Uh, uh, all, you know, we, um, you've seen prisms that they shine the lights through and stuff. Well, prisms have, have a top figure and a bottom figure that are congruent. They're congruent polygons, the same polygons, and they're parallel to each other. Okay, so a prism is identified by the shape of its bases, of congruent bases. Okay, so for example, a triangular prism has triangles as its base. I'll show you an example of that in just a second. So this prism is only going to be dealing with uh, right prisms. Okay, there's other prisms that are called oblique prisms. And prisms, again, you guys, you have congruent, two bases that are congruent and they're parallel to each other. But um, we're going to just be dealing with what right prisms, like a box. A cereal box is a right prism. A pyramid is not a prism because it only has one base. Okay, so prisms have two bases, and they're the same base. Okay, so here, here's an example. This is a square pyramid because the top is a square and the bottom is a square. And it's right, and so when it's right, that means all the other faces are rectangles right here. Okay. So here's a square pyramid because the two bases are squares right there. All right, so uh, notice the other sides are all rectangles. And so the side lengths of this uh, uh, square pyramid has a base of 3, 
So this is, remember it's a square, so this is three and this is three right here, and the height is four, four feet. Okay, so if we're going to cover this, uh, except for the bottom, because it's sitting on top of something, let's say it's a some sort of pedestal that you're, you're um, holding stuff up on, and I think that's what your textbook has. So we're just going to cover just the sides and the top with foil. So these four sides around the side right here and the top piece right up here, uh, we're going to cover it with foil. So if foil costs 22 cents per square foot, how much is the foil going to cost to cover all four of the faces plus the top base? Okay, we're not going to do the bottom base because that's not being seen. We don't need to cover that in foil. Okay, so here's a a net figure of everything that we need okay so so if I if I could cut it down right here cut it down right here right here and then right here and then fold it all those sides down it would give us that right there okay so here's the right side which is this side over here it's three by four so here's my three by four and then they're all three by fours because it's a square so they're all the same okay so let's um uh, let's find the area of all four sides so there's four of them you guys so we're going to multiply it by four by four times three or three times four four times twelve is forty eight so forty eight square feet okay and then we're going to cover the top in uh, foil also so that top is a square so let's add that square right there put that in red so three times three is nine so 48 plus 9 gets us 57. Okay, now I'm going to take out the net figure so we can wrap it up here. Since each square foot costs 22 cents, then we multiply 57 square feet times 22 cents and get 1254. Now what's 1254 mean? Okay, so right here, always answer your question in the context of the problem right here. How much will the foil cost? It's going to cost $12.54. So let's put a dollar sign in front of that. Okay, so 12.54 doesn't mean anything in the context, so we got to wrap it up with the what's the problem asking. Okay, so here's a triangular prism. The reason why this is a triangular prism is because the, the top piece and the bottom piece are triangles. They're congruent triangles, the same triangles. They're parallel to each other. So how much will it cost to cover the base, the the bases, so plural means both bases, and the other three faces using that same foil. Remember that foil was 22 cents uh, per square foot. So we got to find the surface area of everything, the faces going around and both bases. So if I could cut here, cut here, cut here, and then fold it out, it would look something like that. So here's a net figure that looks uh, including both the bases right there. Okay, can you see that right there? All right, and then um, uh, let's see. So uh, if I did that right there, um, we're going to find the area of all the pieces right there. Well, let's find the triangles. Okay, so remember a triangle is one half base times height. But since there's two triangles, we can disregard the one half part. Uh, we just do base times height, so 3 times 4 is 12. So that's the area of both of those triangles. Now let's add in the top rectangle, okay? The top rectangle is 4 by 2, or 2 by 4. I forgot what I did. 4 by 2, okay? So 4 times 2 is 8. Let's add in the middle rectangle, so 5 times 2. 5 times 2 is 10. Okay, and we got one more, 3 times 2, 3 times 2 is 6, okay? So the total surface area is the sum of all of those, which is 36 square feet. So if the foil costs 22 cents, then we take uh, 36 and multiply it by 22, and we get, oh, that doesn't suck, right? Let's see, um, 792, sorry, there should be a, a 792 right there. I know what I was goofing up on. That should be a 7.92, and so then we answer it in the context of the problem of $7.92, okay? All right, hope that makes sense, you guys. And here's some um, uh, some pyramids right here. Let's see if I can, uh, let me go grab my pointer right here. What would I do with it? Uh, oh, good, it's right there, okay. So right here, this is called a, uh, a hexagonal prism because this is a hexagon. The base is a hexagon and there's a congruent base down here. This is a triangular prism right here, okay? And this is a pentagonal prism because a congruent prism's right there. All right, you guys, I hope that makes sense. And you guys are getting close to the end of the school year. Good stuff. All right, take care, you guys.